All right, one more video on signal classification or signal properties. We've been working through about 10 videos now, kind of working through this list, and we're finally on the last part of the list. We're gonna talk about input, output, and internal signals. And these are pretty easy definitions, and it's probably best just to um, discuss them via an example. So here's a uh, system. So in blue, I've called this a system. Internal to the system, there's a lot going on. There's a summation, there's this other subsystem, H1 of S, H3 of S, H2 of S, there's this feedback loop. So there's lots going on, but from just thinking about this as kind of this blue overall box, the input to the system, X of T, is what we would call the input signal. So anything that kind of goes into a box, we call an input signal. And we almost always use an X to represent that. So that's just our convention. Anything that comes out of a box, in this case the blue system box, is what we call an output signal. And we almost always use Ys to describe the output of a system. In this particular system, the kind of innards are a little bit more complicated, and there's lots going on there. So we can also talk about the inputs to these other blocks. So X1 of T goes into this H1 of S system, and X2 of T goes into this H3 of S system, etc. Um, those are what we would call internal signals. Now, often you kind of abstract some of this internal stuff away and you think of just the blue box as a whole and you might not have internal signals. But if you are drawing block diagrams that have lots of components, yes, this is actually an input signal to H1 of S, but X1 of T is kind of an internal signal of the whole system. So again, these definitions are a little loose, but these are the words that we tend to describe for input signals, output signals, and internal signals. You'll notice what I've drawn here is not discrete time. This is a continuous time example that I gave you, but it'd be very easy to redraw all of this where instead of X of T, we had X of K. Instead of Y of T, we had Y of K. And then these systems right here are described in the Laplace domain, right? S is the um, sigma plus J omega. It's what you get when you work in the Laplace domain. So H1 of S is probably the Laplace transform of H1 of T. Most of the things we're doing in this class right now are discrete time. The equivalent way to describe systems in a transform domain that's equivalent to the Laplace domain is the Z transform. So if I wanted to redraw these block diagrams, I would replace H1 of S with H1 of Z. I'd replace H3 of S with H3 of Z and things like that. But we haven't gotten to the Z transform yet, so I thought it was easier just to draw things in the continuous time for now. So that's the end of this example and definition. It's, like I said, it's pretty simple. Things that go into boxes are input signals. Things that come out of boxes are output signals. And if you've decomposed your system to what's going on inside a little bit more um, precisely, you might also have internal signals to the overall system as well. That wraps up this example.